The Secret Science Behind Miracles by Max Freedom Long, Chapter 14 Startling New and Different Ideas from the Kahunas Concerning the Nature of the Complex and Healing What the doctors and psychologists have failed to see clearly is the rather startling fact that the subconscious or low self is not the only one afflicted with fixations of ideas. The complex. Freud, Jung, Adler, all of them fix their attention on the subconscious, not realizing that the conscious self had similar and equally dangerous fixes. The astounding truth is that almost all persons have conscious beliefs or opinions which are fully as fixed as are those of the low self. For instance, take some outstanding examples which will be instantly familiar to all of us. There is the person who is set in some political belief. He has passed beyond all appeals to common sense and logic in his rabid belief that his political party is right and all others are wrong. He will not listen to any argument against his convictions. Any effort to point to parts of his belief that are wrong will be met with anger and loud resentment. A similar example can be found in any of the millions who have accepted a religion and who close their minds entirely against the possible change of their opinion. New facts, new findings, or new circumstances make not the slightest impression on these individuals. They have developed a complex set of beliefs or opinions which are shared by both low and middle self. Here is another secret from the lore of the kahunas. If you wish to know whether a person has a complex belief which is shared by his low self, watch to see whether the emotions react to any suggestion that the beliefs might be less than correct. If you say to a Republican, I think the Republicans are making a mistake about last week's legislation. If you are met with an emotional reaction instead of a quiet consideration of the reasons, you may go on to give your opinion. There is a complex behind the political beliefs of the man. Criticize a man's religion and watch in the same way for the nature of the reaction. The low self is the only one responsible for emotional reactions. The middle self reacts only with logic and reasoning unless it's entangled with the low self and holding complex views, in which case reason fails to begin to function as emotions flare. A man's political complexes, fortunately, seldom react on his health. His religious fixations frequently cause endless illness and misfortune. The kahunas knew what the psychoanalysis, a psychoanalyst has overlooked to a painful extent. It is the fact that when man has sinned and his low and middle self agrees that he has sinned, the low self may have a fixed idea that punishment must be given for sin. If this is the case, the low self may set about punishing the man through illness or accidents. The point can be illustrated by the case reported by a psychologist of a, of a psychoanalyst, sorry, of a young man who had been brought up by an aunt who had been given him a very strict religious training. As he finished high school, he felt the urge to take up the ministry, but gave up the idea to take a job in a furniture factory. In the factory, the paint and varnish fumes sickened him. He was sent to woodworking department, and the sawdust gave him asthma. He got another job and then another. In every case, he was made ill by something connected with the job. He chanced to fall into the hands of a doctor who recognized the symptoms as the indications of a deep-seated complex. His original complex had been formed when he had given up the idea of devoting his life to religious service in the ministry. The low self had shared 
with the Middle South a deep sense of guilt for refusing to give his life to the service of God. Because it was painful to think of the refusal, the young man had shut away the memory of it. But that memory had remained in the low self as a part of the fixation of guilt. As he had been taught that all sins and guilts are punished by God, his low self had expected and feared punishment. However, as the middle self refused to think about the sin of refusing to go into the ministry, the low self did what is known as translating or changing the externals of the complex. It hid its anxiety to have the man to become a minister behind a dislike that amounted to illness for every other occupation. The doctor, after the usual questioning and observation period, dug out the cause of the trouble, but instead of being able to point out the source of the fixation and so rationalize and drain it off, he met a new obstacle. When the young man was forced to recall his refusal to enter the ministry, he was still convinced that he had been guilty before God of a great sin of omission. The doctor tried to argue with him and met a blank wall. The patient would not listen to reason. He became angry and insisted on denouncing himself. In the end, he was advised to enter the ministry to regain his health. He did as advised, and his illnesses vanished. In this case, the complex was not removed. It could not be removed in the ordinary way because it was held by low and middle selves alike. Reason could not get a hearing. The only remedy was to let him act in such a way that he would obey the dictates of the dual fixation. In his report, the doctor showed his failure to recognize the complex as part of the conscious mind of the patient. He wrote, quote, Although the fixation was at last brought to light and submitted to the usual process of rationalization, it became evident that it had not been removed. Upon making a visit to the furniture factory where the symptoms first developed, the smell of paint and wood sandings sickened him in turn. Recovery came only after the fixation was accepted as immutable and a school for ministers was entered. End quote. The urgency of the need for a better understanding of the simple no the urgency of a need for better understanding of the single and dual complex and the ways to combat them may be realized when one considers the dire fact that one out of every family of six will eventually need treatment on this score. Unfortunately, the present methods of treatment are far inferior to those formerly used by the kahunas. The most effective method is deep analysis, but this takes months of time and mints of money. If a cursory view of the case and a small amount of treatment by suggestion does not bring a cure, the patient has an alarming chance of joining the throngs which crowd the hospitals for the insane. A complex of simple nature or dual one, shared by both selves, if not allowed to have its way, creates a house divided against itself, which certainly will fall into insanity or chronic individualism. No, I said that word wrong. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back here into insanity or chronic invalid, invalidism. Invalidism? Hmm. I-N-V-A-L-I-D-I-S-M. Dr. Edward S. Cowles, C-O-W-L-E-S, famous for his soul clinics, said a few years ago that he was certain that the mental conflicts caused by fixations were the direct cause of the steady lowering of nerve energy, which, 
if continued, ended in disaster. He explained that if the usual supply of nerve energy or vital force falls slightly below normal, the individual begins to feel a lack of spirit and cheerfulness. This turns into a feeling of depression. Further depletion results in melancholia, and there come the progressive symptoms as depletion continues. Deeper states of dis depression, hysteria, fear, nervous breakdown, mania, and psychosis. The dismal fringe of insanity is touched. If one continues to sink lower, exhaustion brings helpless insanity in which reason is lost and memory vanishes. In this condition, the patient lies inert and must be artificially fed. It might be added that during the gradual depletion, there is always the danger that a poltergeist type of low self, which has been separated from the middle self, may drive out the selves of the ailing body and obsess it. In these cases, there is a return of physical energy, but with the low original self deposed, memories are gone, and with the original middle self gone, all reason is lacking. With violent death so frequent in the two world wars, it is inevitable that there are more of these ghostly low self spirits of the poltergeist class abroad awaiting a chance to seize a body and obsess it. We continually read articles calling attention to the alarming increase of insanity. At the present rate of increase, some estimate we shall in a few years have so many insane that there will not be enough sane people to feed and care for them. In self-defense, we need to learn what methods were successfully used by the kahunas to combat the complex in its single and dual form and to treat the unfortunate victims of obsession.